Alright guys, this is John Hang, and in today's video I'm going to show you how I turn this table into this. Alright, so here is the table that this video is pretty much all about. I kind of wanted to go through all the damage that it's been through. So I'm getting this table from my girlfriend's parents. They used it for about 20 years, and so this table has a lot of memories, a lot of Christmas dinners, Thanksgiving, and so on. And they really <laughs> used the crap out of this thing. So here's a quick rundown of the things I used to do this refinish project. The first is citrus strip, the next is wood filler. Over to the right is kind of like a scouring pad. I'll show you what I do with that later. A putty knife to scrape away the citrus strip. Some wood finish, some polyurethane, some foam brushes to wipe that polyurethane on, some sanding blocks as well as sandpaper, as well as a sanding power tool in the back. So here I'm spreading the citrus strip, and honestly I don't know how to use it that well. From what I understand it seems like you kind of just like throw it everywhere and then spread it around and let it sit for like 30 minutes. Or at least that's what I understood the back of the label saying. So here it is all spread out and it kind of looks kind of funny, like I didn't spread it correctly. After about 30 minutes I go in with this refinishing tool, or like I call it a putty knife, and sort of try to scrape off all this citrus strip. And it's supposed to be like a finish remover, but this table was so damaged that it was just difficult to do that. You can see in that previous shot like all of the dark gunk coming off this table. So here's just a quick time lapse. There's going to be a lot of time lapse in this, but so after everything's been scraped off you can see that there's like some remaining residue like that's been soaked into the wood, as well as just this stuff is really difficult to manage because it just becomes goop. Here I'm using the scouring pad that I mentioned earlier to kind of just get stuff that I can't really get with the putty knife. And you can see here what it's kind of meant to do, kind of just like pick everything up. So now that everything's been taken off, I think that I decided to try to sand it. No, actually I took off the legs and wanted to do it with the other side because at one point my girlfriend's parents actually flipped over the table after it had been worn down so much, so both sides of this table are completely destroyed. I attempted to start using the sanding power tool, um, but you can see here that I pretty quickly decided that it wasn't going to happen because it was still wet. It was still wet from the citrus strip, so I came back the next day after it dried up, and you can see here I'm kind of just making sure that it is completely dry to the touch, and kind of inspecting like what's been done so far. Um, since I'm sanding, I decided to move it outside of the garage, um, and yeah, I figured that the legs would be a good platform to do the sanding on. So first thing I did was I tried using the power tool again, and quickly into that I realized that, wait, it's not sanding for some reason. Uh, upon closer inspection, I realized that the citrus strip that had dried was now gunking up all the sandpaper and doing this. And so the gunk was keeping the sandpaper from being in contact with the wood. And so this was like such a headache. I did try like peeling off this gunk and then going back with the, sand the machine, but it just didn't work. I ended up having to just do it by hand, at least the beginning part. Sanding it by hand, it was a little bit more manageable because I was able to like wipe off a little bit and then just wipe that off the sanding block and then just keep repeating that. So once it was like a little bit drier, smoother to the touch, um, I was ready to kind of go in with the actual power tool. But I think at this point I needed to go somewhere so I was calling it a night. Alright, so this is day three of working on this table and um, I think I'm finally going to finish sanding it today. I don't even know if I'll be able to stain, stain it today, but I think this is getting closer to being done. You can see here that, um, you can see here that it's still got like some uneven stuff done to it. I think that sanding will definitely help this a lot. Um, so let's get started on that. So now that the table is completely dry and the first parts of the gunk was all sanded off. I could finally use this power tool and it was starting to look very different. You can see here that there's no more like tiger striping and here I think I'm doing like the final touches with like a more 
fine piece of sandpaper in a sanding block. Once I was done sanding for the most part, I went in with a small vacuum and just kind of picked up as much dust as I could. And then once I was done with the vacuum, I noticed that there are a lot of like little screw holes and that was because uh, I mentioned before that my girlfriend's parents flipped over this table so that they couldn't use the other side. So we went in with the wood filler and my girlfriend was free for once so she actually helped me with putting in the wood putty. Uh, if I were to do this again, I probably wouldn't use wood putty from a tube. I noticed that um, the wood putty wasn't very um, malleable and it wasn't very smooth putting it on. So I've noticed that like tubs of wood putty are a little bit better. So while the wood putty was drying, we decided to scuff up the legs a little bit. We were planning to spray paint the legs, so I think that you just scuff up stuff to make spray paint adhere to it a little better. So now that the putty has dried, we just sandpaper it, uh, sand it with like, I don't know, 120 grit sandpaper, and that stuff comes off pretty easily. And so now we're at like sort of the finishing steps. We went in with an extra fine 220 grit. And I think this is one very important tool that we can use, this tack cloth, which is sort of like a waxy like cheese cloth that picks up like any fine particles that you normally can't just like dust off with your hands. And so this is just sort of like one of those, like it makes the difference between like good and very good or like very good and perfect. So I think the tack cloth was very useful. Next we went in with some stain. Um, I just picked up a random stain that looked good from Lowe's and it was my first time staining something so uh, we both kind of didn't know what we were doing. We kind of first started off with this like circular motion but then the actual container said go with the grain so that's what we did. Um, and we were a little bit cautious at first because uh, we didn't really know how much to put um, but we did actually end up going with like a second layer. Uh, you can see here that like some of the sanding from um, the machine was a little bit too rough and it left some like deeper scratches than we were hoping. Um, so those are like visible scratches that kind of suck, but it kind of gives like that whole like rustic farmhouse look to this table. So the next day after the stain had dried, I went in with the polyurethane and this was pretty much my first time doing polyurethane also. I was looking up online and you're supposed to do it as smooth as possible and like as little as little strokes as possible and you see here I'm kind of failing at that but I do eventually get better at that um, and here was in real time how slow I was actually going and so this table despite it being pretty slow took a I don't know a fairly decent amount of time uh, applying the poly but nowhere near as much time uh, doing all the sanding and uh, removing of other crap from there. So later that night, the poly dried and I went in with some fine sandpaper and sanded down the polyurethane. And so this is what you're actually supposed to do to get a like very smooth finish on your poly. So we went back in, um, we wiped it down with the rag and then we went back in with the tack cloth and then we went in with one more layer of poly. And so I don't know about you, but this looks just very satisfying seeing something going from like a dull, like um, dusty whatever to this gloss. And so from here, we pretty much did the same thing over and over again. Hey, so this table project has been a really long time in the making, but I'm glad that it's finally done. You could fit a comfortable amount of people here, about six people. I've gotten a lot of compliments like, oh, this table is so nice, where'd you get it? And we always say like, oh, this used to be my girlfriend's parents or Melissa's parents. And the people that have recognized that table don't recognize that this is the same table. And I think that that is really amazing to be able to salvage something and just make it almost uh, new, but it still has its own story. So a funny thing about this table was um, I probably spent over a hundred dollars uh, refinishing it. Then I asked my girlfriend's parents how much this table actually cost them and apparently it was $65 to begin with. So I spent more refinishing this table than it actually cost them, which was kind of stupid. Maybe not stupid, but I was expecting this table to cost a lot more than it did. But anyways, I'm glad that this table is done. We've 
had lots of dinners on it already. Um, as you can see, I'm in my new house and we actually started this table refinish before I even moved in. But now that it's here, we're able to use it. And yeah, thanks for watching this one. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe or like or comment or whatever else it is. And I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully now that this video is out there, I can start making new ones uh, at a faster pace. But yeah, thanks. On top of making the table, I also made this bench to go along with it. It's the exact same stain as well as the exact same polyurethane. And I think that they look pretty good together. We also got this blue rug that kind of, I think it contrasts the brown table very well.